knee examination, inspection, and palpation. The knee examination will start by asking the patient about the history of the injury. If the patient states that they felt a pop and immediate swelling in a non-contact mechanism or the patient landed awkwardly, then this is an ACL tear. This injury is usually due to non-contact deceleration injury that produces a valgus twisting injury. Immediate swelling, probably a large hemoarthrosis. And if the patient is stated that they have a twisting injury, now he feel locking and catching, which we call it mechanical symptoms, and the patient gets some swelling later on, then that is probably a meniscal tear. And if the patient is stated that they have pain with the stairs and anterior knee pain and feel some crepitus, that's probably a patellar problem. If the patient said he had pain on the inside of the knee after a blow to the outside of the knee, that's probably an MCL tear. If it is a dashboard injury or a fall with the foot plantar flexed, then that's probably a PCL injury. If the patient stated that he had a fall with the foot dorsiflexed, then this is a patellar problem. In inspection, we're going to inspect the knee area for a swelling, for a scar, for ecchymosis, for muscle atrophy. We're going to check the quadriceps on the right side and on the left side and compare it. We're going to ask the patient to stand and check the alignment. Do you have varus bow legs? or valgus, not knees? Does the patient have a cavus foot, high arched feet, internal tibial torsion, or flat feet? That will increase the patellofemoral abnormality. And after that, we we'll check the gait. Check if the patient has quadriceps avoidance gait, which occurs with ACL injury. The patient will walk with a slightly bent knee to avoid making the quadriceps work. Check if the patient has antalgic gait, which is a painful gait. Antalgic gait is done to lift the painful extremity quickly off the ground. Antalgic gait is usually caused by a hip or a knee pathology or from severe disc radiation symptoms. We're going to make sure that the pain is not radiating from the spine. So we ask the patient questions related to the spine. Probably you need to do the straight leg raising. The test is positive when the painful limb is elevated and that causes severe sciatica and radicular pain. Make sure you check the dorsiflexion and plantar flexion of the ankle and the toes, especially the big toe. Check the sensation in different dermatomes. Then, we don't forget about hip exam, especially in children. You may have slept epiphysis, so we need to check the internal and external rotation of the hip. Questions about the hip and the hip exam may detect hip pathology with pain radiating to the medial aspect of the knee. Now we go for the range of motion. 
the patient will be supine. Extension should be full and deflection should be about 130 degree. Compare it to the other side. When you evaluate and compare flexion contracture on both sides, you can do it supine and also prone. As with every orthopedic patient, you will do distal neurovascular exam. The neural exam will include the sensation. Usually, you examine the sensation at the foot level, and you examine the strength and the power of the muscles of the quadriceps, the hamstring, and the gastric muscles. Don't forget about the pulses, especially with somebody that have a knee dislocation or multiple ligamentous injury of the knee. You may get assistance from the ankle brachial index, which should be at least 0.9. And the last thing you will do is palpation. This is usually done with the patient's supine. The first thing I do is I palpate the joint line tenderness to rule out meniscal injury or arthritis. Then I palpate the anatomical landmarks around the knee, like the quadriceps tendon, the patella, the distal pole of the patella, to see if the patient has jumper's knee. I palpate around the patellar tendon, the tibial tubercle, roll out Asgott Schlatter. You're gonna spend a little time with the patellar exam. In patellar pathology, the most specific test is patellar apprehension test. And when you put your fingers on the patella, and they try to push the patella laterally. And if this causes pain and apprehension, then the test is positive. Now we're gonna examine the patella, evaluate for patella tracking by full range of motion to see if the patella will stay in its position or it will sublux. You will check the medial side tenderness over the medial patellofemoral ligament. You will check the patellar stability by moving the patella from side to side and also try to feel the under surface of the patella for arthritis or any chondral lesion, both medially and laterally. You need to check for the hamstring. You need to check for the hamstring insertion, which is the pes and serine, which is several finger breadth below the joint medially to check if the patient has pis and serine bursitis or not. Then you go to the lateral side of the knee. You check for the iliotibial band, which inserts in Gerdes tubercle. The pain can be at Gerdes tubercle or it can be at the lateral epicondyle of the femur. So you're going to bend the knee and you're going to check the IT band at the lateral epicondyle of the femur and you go from flexion to extension. The IT band will go from posterior to anterior and rub against the epicondyle and causes pain. The runner's pain is usually proximal to the girdis tubercle, maybe associated with pronated feet and various alignment and prominent lateral epicondyle. You're gonna try to do the upper test. The hip will be in full extension and drop the knee down. If the iliotibial band is tight, the knee will not come down and won't touch the other knee. The most important thing is not to miss hemoarthrosis or effusion. At that point, you start thinking about an ACL tear, meniscal injury, patellar dislocation, or interarticular fracture. Look for effusion. 
check the suprapatellar pouch and around uh, the knee for effusion or swelling. Try to push the fluid from one side to the other or from the top to the bottom or vice versa. Try to feel that effusion. Try to milk that effusion so you can detect some fluid. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed that video. This video is for educational purposes only. Please consult your doctor before you make any decision about your medical care.